just putting together a quick video today. I really did not think I was going to be making this video. The main reason was is that Apple almost never announces products during their WWDC event like they did today. And it turns out they announced a lot of cool stuff. So I'm gonna go over some of my favorite things. And the other thing I'm doing in this video that I have never ever done in a video before is I am going completely without a script off the top of my head. So this might be terrible. So the number one thing that I really liked about this and the, the thing that really stood out to me that I liked the most was the most boring part of it, which were some of the updates to iOS. For example, the file system. Holy cow. I think for most people, they're just gonna yawn and think, yeah, big deal. But if you already have an iPad Pro and, and you want to use it for more than just one task here, one task there, that file system is huge. And my one major complaint about the iPad Pro is that if you want to use it for that one task, like I want to draw and procreate, you're in great shape. But if you want to do other things with it, it gets really frustrating. For example, I use a lot of screenshots. I share a lot of screenshots when I'm looking at illustrations for inspiration. I often use my iPad for that. I'm always surfing the web on my iPad uh, and I like to take screenshots. I have hundreds of screenshots that I have taken from Instagram, uh, but I have cropped out all of Instagram. So you see the entire page from Instagram. All I want is like the person's name and the actual image that I'm looking at, or maybe I want to crop out a texture. So adding a cropping feature to iOS, again, really insanely helpful. Overall, it seems like they're taking iOS and making it more like the Mac, which I think is a good thing. If you're really gonna have the iPads compete with the Surface Pros and the Windows computers of the world, you need to bring it up to par. It needs to be able to do what a standard desktop can do. And talking about Mac OS, the one thing that was missing, and this is kind of huge news is, but not really, it, it, there is no touch coming to Mac OS. They talked about the High Sierra's update. They didn't talk about, uh, adding touch to the interface at all. Most people are gonna miss that. They're not gonna read much into it, but this is where you're going to mention a feature that big. I've, I've said it all along, and, and I don't think most people it's really clicked with when they think about it, but as an interface designer, I can tell you, when you introduce touch to your interface, it dramatically changes the way you have to design the interface itself. And so adding the kind of touch feature to your interface to your operating system is no small task. When they did it with Windows 8, that was a huge change. And people really didn't like Windows 8. It was clunky, it was weird. Now they had a couple years to kind of improve on that, iterate on that, they've made Windows 10 actually really nice from a touch perspective, that took years to get to. And they have to start iterating on Mac OS sooner rather than later. And they have to introduce touch, you know, in the operating system. We didn't hear anything about that, uh, which means I don't think we're going to see that in any hardware, you know, this fall. So no touch. That was kind of the non-news of the day. So all of those little features and the way that you switch between apps and the way all of that works together and some of the things that you can now do with a pencil, all those little boring things are definitely my favorite part of this keynote and my favorite part of what Apple is doing. Number two, I really did not expect new Apple hardware at all. In fact, I told somebody specifically in the comments this morning, no, we are not gonna see new iPads. We are not going to see those until the fall. Uh, I was totally wrong. Uh, we got two new iPad Pros, uh, the iPad Pro, the smaller one, the nine inch one, uh, it goes wider. So now it's a 10.5 inch screen. So the device itself is the same size, but the screen is bigger. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, that makes it even, even easier to recommend. One of the things I've told people is that uh, if you're only using the iPad for drawing, the larger iPad is nicer. However, if you like reading on it, if you like taking it places, the smaller one is, is really kind of probably the better way to go but now you get that smaller form factor but a bigger screen on that form factor that's awesome also since somebody's going to ask am i going to be reviewing it no i don't plan on reviewing any of the new ipads i i think there's some nice upgrades in there but not enough to really warrant doing another upgrade or a, a, another review uh, per se about them. Although the refresh rate on the screens is supposed to be a lot better now. Uh, in fact, I think it's like, uh, I'm gonna mess up these numbers because I'm going off my head. I think they said it was like 20 MS. I don't know what that means, but I think Microsoft with the new Surface Pro has 21 or 24. Uh, so they've really brought it up to that same level, which I think is interesting that they independently, both of them have you know gone down that route. I think that's gonna make drawing snappier uh, Personally, in, in the devices that I've been using, the Surface Pro and the iPad Pro, I don't really notice that kind of lag when I'm using it. I notice it oftentimes when I videotape it 
videotape it when I record it with my phone. There's no tape involved here. When I record it with my phone and then play it back, I need to slow it down a little bit. Then you see uh, the line kind of dragging behind the pencil, but what I'm actually drawing, I don't really notice that much lag. Number three, the new iMac. Now, th the main thing here is they announced the iMac Pro. That that looks kind of cool. It's $5,000. That is a lot of money. It looks really awesome. They put about 8,000 cores in it. I don't know what a core is. I think it has something to do with the processor, and they put a lot of them in there. So, so that's great. That's more money than I want to pay for a computer. So I don't think I'm going to be picking one up. I also did a video about how, uh, this is a couple months ago, about how Apple is overthinking their Mac Pro line. Like, we don't necessarily want, um, what am I trying to say here? We don't want huge innovation. We just want power, the ability to upgrade it, and that sort of thing. So with an iMac Pro, I still can't just pop out the graphics card and, and replace it in two years. You know, so that... That's kind of a bummer. It sounds like it's a monster graphic card. There's external GPUs that you can attach to these things now. Uh, they're bringing something like that out. That sounds kind of cool. I don't really know much about what an external GPU does or how it works. I'm assuming it's just like an internal one. It just happens to be attached from the outside. Is there extra lag there? I have no idea. Uh, th this concept is pretty new to me. But overall, this whole idea that they've gone in, they've updated the iMacs. They have updated the MacBook Pros. They've just bumped up the specs pretty much on all of them across the board. That is good. That is something that has frustrated me about Apple in the fall was that they rolled out these new MacBook Pros and everybody was like, ooh, touch bar, that's really cool. But it's like, just all we need is really a spec bump. Uh, I don't want to pay more for something that I'm not necessarily going to use. But when I pay a premium for a computer, I want to know that, hey, we've stuck the latest and greatest processor in there. Uh, we're making sure that you're getting a good deal on the extra RAM that you're buying. Little things like that. Uh, I just want a good value for the money that I'm spending. And so I'm glad to see them doing that. And overall, as they kept going on and on and on and saying, oh yeah, we're updating this and we're updating this and we're updating this. I was like, holy cow, I wasn't sure we were going to see any hardware this time around. And here we are. We're seeing everything updated. Fourth, are we on four or three? I don't know. I'm going with four. Fourth, uh, the, the HomePod, is that what it's called? First of all, uh, Amazon has their doodad. I think Google probably has one too. And I've always seen those and thought, you know what? I don't really want one of those in my house. But when I saw the HomePod, I thought, yeah, I want one. And I think the reason why is because they're selling it like a speaker. In fact, they're, they're selling it like from the angle of music. They're even giving it the pod name like the iPod. And that makes a ton of sense. Like, hey, wouldn't you like to have an amazing speaker in your house that you can put anywhere and then you could tell Siri to play whatever or you can control it with your phone? I don't think this is that much different than the stuff that's out there, but by taking it from that musical angle and saying, let's just make an amazing speaker that happens to do everything else that everybody else is doing, that's a great angle. Fifth, I have no fifth. I only had four, um, but, but one thing that did pop out in my mind was that uh, Apple has always enjoyed saying, hey, here's a new product. We're unveiling it today. You can pre-order it tomorrow or Friday, and then it'll arrive at your house, you know, in a couple weeks or when it ships or whenever. They like those really short lead times between announcing a product and actually releasing a product. And I was kind of impressed that like with the speaker, it's a couple months out. Uh, the iMac Pro, it is a couple months out. Uh, they announced a couple months ago by talking to a couple select journalists that they're working on a new Mac Pro, and that is months out. That's probably actually a next year sort of product. And I'm wondering why is Apple announcing this stuff so early? And I think there's a couple reasons. I think in terms of the Mac line, they're announcing it because a lot of people like myself said, hey, are you abandoning Pro users? Do you really care about the Mac anymore? Uh, so overall to see them really spend so much time thinking and talking about the Mac in this press conference was was really great. But I'm also wondering, since they can't really keep secrets, like all these people in their supply chain are like leaking photos of, of their products as they're being produced, since they can't really keep those secrets as well anymore, if they're like, might as well announce them in advance and be able to spin them the way we want to spin them so that people aren't like watching our press conferences and saying, oh, this is boring. We knew all this was coming. There's no surprises here. There's nothing exciting. So I think that aspect of it, at least for me, uh, it kept this press conference interesting uh, from beginning to end. And it was long. It was like, I don't even know, like two and a half hours. Sixth. You can't see my other hand. Sixth. Yeah, I have a sixth. I 
Didn't think I would, but here we are. It seems in general in this press conference, they lost a lot of the flowery language. Apple has done this. Actually, it started with Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs used to say, this is magical. This is amazing. This is astounding. And he used these big verbose, ridiculous terms, but Steve Jobs was a showman. And so he could go on the stage and he could pull that off and you'd be like, wow, that really is magical. But when Tim Cook says something's magical, you're like, yeah, that's just spin, man. And they said some goofy stuff like that in the fall at their last big press conference and they got called out on it and people were like, yeah, that you, you guys are just out of touch and out of context here. So it was nice to see them scale back a lot of that marketing speak and focus on the meat and focus on what's actually interesting here. That was something I really liked too. Seventh, I keep thinking of things as I keep going. There was a lot of like VR demos and a lot of 3D demos and, and stuff like that. And I guess a lot of people get excited about that sort of thing and I guess it was cool. Um, I'm more of a practical application sort of guy. When I see something, I wanna be like, okay, how am I gonna use it? I think that was part of the reason why the HomePod was so interesting to me. Like they sold it like a speaker, like this is in your house. You can listen to music on it. You can listen to your podcasts on it. You know, selling it as a practical device that you can see yourself using all the time. I love that. And I guess with a lot of like the VR demos and stuff that they were doing, eh, it just didn't resonate with me. Um, you know, maybe in a year or two when there's like actual things that you're like, okay, this is an app you could download now and play and it's a lot of fun to play with. Cool, then I'm on board, but for now, I'm just kinda like, meh. Eight, I'm just kidding, there is no eight. I'm pretty much done, those those are my general thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think, you know, down below. Um, you know, a lot of cool stuff if you're an Illustrator artist in terms of just better hardware, you know, nice new little updates to the iPad Pro and the Pencil. Yeah, so that's it. I'll talk to you guys later.